All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Before we get into the real video, we'd like to thank Vantrue, the sponsor of today's video. They sent out the JS1 jump starter, which I'll show you in the middle of this video, and I'll show you how to win this one for free. This is one of your guys's, so stay tuned. All right, let's get into it. All right, good morning, everyone. It's about 9 a.m. here and we've had a lot of requests for this specific video which is going to be a service truck tour so i'm going to show you the ins and out of my truck show you the tools show you the inverter the printer uh, the whole setup i put up underneath the hood let's get over here and show you all right i think we're going to start with the tools first and then we'll get inside so First cabinet here is where I keep all of my wrenches. My wrenches, my pliers, um, channel locks, pry bars, crescent wrench, um, cutters, panel tools. These get those little Christmas tree clips off, hooks and picks and all kinds of goodies. Then we have our wrenches. So these are Matco ratcheting wrenches. I have eight through 19, so 21 through 25. I know it's a weird size. I don't know why they'd give a 25, but uh, these are the Icon brand uh, ratcheting wrenches and they're flex head. Um, guys, you can buy, I bought these off the tool truck. You can get these at Harbor Freight, but you can also look on like your Facebook Marketplace, your OfferUp, any of those apps. And you could find, you know, tools that came off pallets or, you know, someone doing those, uh, like yard sales or something. I got these off of Facebook Marketplace from a guy that bought a pallet of them. So, you know, I saved a ton of money doing that. Um, these are Mountain. I bought these off the tool truck. Um, ratcheting wrenches. I also have the Icon ones. That same thing, bought them off of Facebook. So you don't have to go spend a ton of money on the tool truck. Harbor Freight sells these at a really good price. You can find them online at a really good price. These are my uh, standard sockets and you know, line wrench sockets. A few, so uh, I mean, wrenches, standard wrenches and line wrenches and wrenches that I normally don't use. This is an oxygen sensor wrench from Matco. I use this a lot, but I got stubby wrenches, Harbor Freight uh, metric or standard wrenches, Harbor Freight. These S-type wrenches, Harbor Freight. You know, these these have worked great. I haven't had an issue yet. I've been buying from Harbor Freight for a long time. So this is the Quinn brand torque wrench from Harbor Freight. I've got all kinds of different ratchets. These are Tecton from Amazon. I bought these just to try them. They work pretty good. I like it. Matco a half inch ratchet. Uh, got some Allens. I got some random sockets in here too, like oxygen sensor sockets, spark plug sockets. These are the Icon uh, impact swivel sockets. So I bought these on open box and I saved like $30 or something like that at Harbor Freight. Um, Harbor Freight 3.8s. So I've got a mix of different different manufacturers. This is for the Hondas. This is a one of those weighted sockets. Get the crankshaft pulley bolt off. I believe these are called triple square for Volkswagen some of those foreign cars. Oh, this thing's pretty cool. So it's chain driven inside and you put your impact here and it spins this side over here. So pretty neat tool. Uh, breaker bar, belt tool. This is my favorite part right here. My multimeter. I, I like doing electrical guys. What I love to do at the dealership when I was there. We've got wire strippers crimpers, another meter, uh, solder, my Milwaukee 
soldering iron, which that's that's awesome. Test light. I carry uh, battery terminals on the truck. I've used a lot of them already. You'd be surprised how many no starts you go to and the terminals are just shot. Battery cleaner tool, the uh, push button to test starters. Retractable test leads, the relay buddy. This is where you can pull out your relay, put this in, and it'll command it on. It'll just jump power instead of using a like a wire or something, you know, a torch, and a few things. Always keep a fire extinguisher. I have one out here. I have one in the truck. My diamond grip gloves, which you know, I prefer the most. My Milwaukee bag, you'll see me grab this bag and throw a bunch of tools in it and go do a job. This is that caliper tool that everyone was loving. This one's from Matco. Uh, Amazon sells one. Um, Lyle is the company. Great company. This is the other style for, say, Toyota or Brembo. It spreads it open this way. Um, guys, I didn't I didn't clean up any of this. This is how it looks every single morning at the end of the day I just put everything back where it goes. So you're gonna see oh, that's messy Yeah, it might be but it works for me. So I'm, I'm trying to keep it I'm Not trying to put everything away nice and show you how I actually work with it um, dead blow hammer uh, mini sledgehammer some leather gloves um, wear your, your leather gloves guys because I didn't when I did a cat and I put the new one in and had to replug in the oxygen sensor and got a nasty burn so wear your gloves. Uh, keep the blue shop towels down here. Alright let's go to the next one which is our sockets. So we've got the Milwaukee quarter inch impact wrench or ratchet, uh, 3 8 impact ratchet. This is the driver with a quarter inch bit. These are awesome. I beat these up at the dealership because I use them every single day, all day long. Um, this, this one specifically. This is my second one. I retired the other one. And they just work great. Milwaukee's a great company. Um, you get what you pay for. Five year tool warranty three-year battery warranty no I'm not sponsored I wish I was but I absolutely love Milwaukee tools I've got a whole bunch of Milwaukee tools in the garage um, this flashlight Milwaukee it came with a kit I never thought I'd use it thought it was kind of dumb but as soon as I started using it it's actually really cool you know the handle it, it lasts forever I keep this battery on it this battery is from 2017 and it's it's not really good on tools anymore but it's great for the light. This is probably one of my, probably my second favorite tool besides this. This is the 3.8 Stubby M12, and it has, I believe, 250 foot-pounds of torque. It's a great, great, great tool. Uh, I keep extra batteries or some in the truck. A uh, bunch more extra Milwaukee batteries. This is a, a light. It was a sale on uh, one of those coupon things my my wife sees on Facebook and she uh, found these they were like five ten dollars it's pretty good light we got extensions we got torque sticks we have our gear wrench swivel sockets quarter inch Harbor Freight 3 8 ratchet I uh, used this one a couple of years straight now. Hasn't been warranted yet. Uh, everyone asks, how do you get, when you reach in that bag, how do you pick the right socket every time? How do you know which one that you want? Well, the answer is, most of the time I use the color-coded sockets. And these are from Harbor Freight. Like, you know, this color is 19, 18, 17. And I could pull this one here. That's a 13. It's green. You just learn the colors over time and it's actually really cool so you can just reach in you don't got to grab 10 sockets because they're all chrome we got our th these trays are from amazon 
Um, I have the Matco one inside the garage that I use. But uh, these are Harbor Freight um, half inch impact sockets. These are snap on mid depth. I bought these when I worked in Redlands from the snap on guy there off the tool truck. He was really cool. So I have those snap on. I have snap on impact ratchets. Um, I use those in the garage. Those I used to use professionally, but now I retired those because they're several years old. I just use the Milwaukee lineup. So that's metric. These are standard. Again, Harbor Freight. You can't go wrong. The, the price difference is just crazy. Like, you know, you get these on sale for $10. 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 These on sale for $20. You, you just can't beat it. And I'm a, I'm a professional technician. I, I use them every single day. I don't necessarily use these every day, but I use these every day. And I can say I probably warrantied this one once in, I don't know, over 10 years of having them, something like that. Eight, 10 years when I first got the color-coded ones. Um, more Harbor Freight. So let's put this back in here. We got, you know, long, long extensions for those uh, transmissions, the bell housing bolts. So the other cool thing about the truck is there's this arrow here and you can push just in there there's a little button and it pops up these so this is where i keep you know, ac gaskets nuts and bolt kit o-rings drill bits yes i have a lot of sets of drill bits because i do go through them when i extract bolts if i can't weld them out um vacuum caps there's a bunch more stuff underneath them vacuum pump these clips on your bumpers when they break i replace them fuses ac caps uh, heat shield tape heat shrink tubing more electrical stuff schrader valves so that's the cool thing about this truck and that's why i don't have anything over the top is because I also have storage up here. Looks looks a little hidden though. Looks really clean like that. Pretty cool. Alright. Oh man. How did I not unlock that one? I'm trying to shoot this in one shot. And I didn't uh, I didn't unlock this. Alright, this drawer back here is all my fluids. You can't keep every single fluid on the truck but you know I try to keep the basics I've got brake cleaner this is a combustion leak test fluid this is to check your head gaskets uh, bearing grease soapy water hand cleaner pag oil for AC this is that brake parts lubricant that I use uh, battery cleaners TV Blaster, my favorite. Not sponsored yet. One day they'll sponsor me. I use the crap out of that stuff. I keep a gas can for the generator and the air compressor back there. I bought this funnel kind of as a joke. It's it's huge. That's a one gallon bottle here. And yeah, I bought it as a joke, but honestly, it's the coolest thing ever. Uh, brake bleeder. I keep coolant, I keep brake fluid, I keep power steering fluid, I keep an AC bypass pulley on my truck. I just recently bought that because I didn't say anything about it, but I had probably three or four days of AC troubles with the truck. The compressors, I'll tell you when we get up there. The compressors were just terrible, but I'll explain it while we're up there under the hood. So, all right, we're gonna skip the back. We're gonna skip over to this side here. We'll come back to the back. So I keep a grinder. You never know when you need to cut things, sand things down. Um, let's see, I got drills. I got air hammer. I got an air saw, uh, M18 drill. I keep wire. 
Um, here's a battery tester, just a load tester. This is Allen head set. This is a torque set. This is the Harbor Freight Master app. And a torque set. So I really like this one. It's got everything you'll need as it's like a hundred bucks. That's it. I think I paid three something for this one and probably another 200 for this if I had to guess. And this is a hundred bucks. So I bought these off the tool truck years ago and I just recently bought this. That's gonna go into the second service truck, which you'll get a tour on that later. Not right now, but I keep a Sawzall. Never know when you need to cut anything. I keep a vacuum, Milwaukee vacuum. I keep this on the truck because when you do intakes, Usually you have like leaves and you know, poop and stuff like that from rodents. And you, you don't want that stuff going in there. So I keep the vacuum. Hose clamps. Always keep hose clamps on the truck. You never know when you're going to need hose clamps. This is a smoke machine. That's so I can smoke uh, EVAP systems. It applies pressure and smoke inside of the system. There's a bunch of caps for it. There's more hose clamps. That smoke machine was, I want to say, $100 on Amazon. Pretty cool. All right, this is the messy case drawer. I'll pull out a few tools and show you what they are. This is from O'Reilly's Stretch Fit Belt Tool. You can rent these from O'Reilly's. I don't like to rent things, I just would rather buy it. But you can rent this for the stretch belts on newer vehicles. Um, stretch belts suck. Uh, you can use zip ties instead of that on some applications, but others you just can't. This is for rear brakes. Um, some of them you have to twist the caliper inwards in order to get it in. Snap ring pliers, Matco. Nice set of them. Those are good quality. Axle nut sockets. I guess I lost that one. I don't know where it is, but I replaced it with a chrome one. Hasn't let me down yet. This is a cool tool for all you guys who do AC. Have you ever done AC and you pulled off your gauges and the Schrader valve leaked? The valve core in there? No? This solves that. So you clip it on, push this in there, you twist the Schrader valve out, pull up, and close the ball valve. And you don't lose your refrigerant. Super cool tool. You find these on Amazon and tool trucks in different places. This one's from Amazon. Awesome, awesome concept. You just bits. These are uh, extractor, nut and bolt remover. Whoa, I want bits all over the floor. Let's put these, over here. Um, these are, this is a good one too. Is another good one. These are half size flip sockets. I worked at Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram and always the lug nuts were swollen. So this is half size sockets 22 and a half, 21 and a half, just a bunch of different half sizes. So 19 and a half. Again, Amazon. I'm not opposed to Amazon for some things. Actually, a lot of things significantly cheaper, and you know you're not going to use these every day unless you work at the dealership. Then you know you might buy them off the tool truck, but 
I didn't have to use those a crazy amount of, of times, but I did a lot. These are to remove lug nuts. Lug nut removal set. This is another extractor set. Um, compression tester, fuel pressure tester, um, harmonic balancer puller. This is a pressure tester adapter set from Harbor Freight. Works really good. Tap and die set. Standard and metric. Any mobile mechanic guys, or anyone really, any mechanic should have a tap and die set. Never know when you're gonna need it. Do I have two sets? Oh, I think I do have one. Why not two sets on the truck? That's funny. Oh. oh, I guess I have two sets on the truck. I didn't need them to. But... So I do have a lot of doubles of tools, and most of them are in the garage waiting for the second service truck to be done. Which once that second service truck is painted, then you know, we can do a lot more with it. I just want to get it painted and I had it all sanded down so I could paint it. It was ugly. Um, power steering puller, power steering pulley puller. Fan clutch removal set for an air hammer. This is a dial indicator. Check your ball joints. Leak down tester for checking the cylinder leak down. And of course, I worked for Chrysler Dodge, so I have to have these uh, phaser timing chain tools. That way it it locks the phasers in place and use that to push down on the tensioner. And then you push that little hook inside the tensioner and it holds tension on it, or it holds it loose so there's no tension on it. So you can work. So you can work on the uh, camshafts and everything without pulling the timing cover. Bearing race and seal driver kit, another fuel tester, and yeah, so that's this drawer for this cabinet. I'm gonna put it away and then I'll show you what's up here. All right, we got it all put away and surprisingly, when you put it away nice and organized, you actually have more room, so. <laughs> all right, we'll push this up here. And rear axle, seal puller, bearing puller, front axle, bearing installer, impact driver, so those stubborn screws or bolts that won't come out, you hit that and it'll apply uh, you know, some twisting force and forward force. Fuel pump tool. Um, this is that, all right, this is. In a video before, I showed those, a uh, way to get those inner tie rods out. Well, this is another tool. So this slides over the tie rod and there's these little, clips I'll show you so there's these these things and it slides in there clips on there it goes around your tie rod so, sorry there's a house truck going by so that's that inner tie rod tool a stud removal set vacuum cage, slide hammer, bearing separator, pullers, and a ton of air hammer bits. So that air hammer used to get used a lot. No, not so much these days. But at the dealership we use them a lot. Alright, last cabinet. We'll start with up here. These are for Clamping off hoses, uh, memory saver for changing batteries, 
plug this in your cigarette lighter, clamp this on to like a, another battery or a jumper, and it keeps uh, the memory in your computer. So that way, you know, some of the Toyotas are funky when starting them back up. Some cars don't want to start back up. So definitely have that for that scenario. Um, stethoscope, hose clamp, uh, pliers. This one's pretty cool. This one's from Cornwell. So clamp it and it can lock and hold it. C clamp, light, harmonic balancer puller, some vice grips, plastic rivet tool, seal puller, you know, some magnets, some spare fuses, some spare relays. UV light. This is for Toyota um, so uh, belt tensioner socket. So it's a little short socket meant for the Toyota tensioners on the 1ZZ and 2ZZ. So 98 and up, Celica Corolla Matrix MR2 with the 1.8s. No, I haven't needed it, but yes, do I randomly buy things that I might need? Yeah, it's 10 bucks, sure. This is an uh, angle finder or degree gauge. This one's pretty cool. This is from Harbor Freight. This is, if you don't have a torque wrench, you can put this on your regular ratchet and turn it on, set it to where you want, and it will tell you what the torque is. And it'll tell you when to stop also. Fuel line tools and AC safety glasses. This is a stud installer for wheel studs. This thing here is for extracting studs. You twist it over it. It grabs onto the stud and then you can keep twisting it. Low profile oil pressure sensor tool. This one uses on the 3236 Chrysler engines. Um, this one is for Duramax. Uh, LB7 injector cups. This pulls the cups out. Big sockets for um, steering gearbox or pitman arm nuts. This is for the tap and die set. Thread chaser for a spark plug hole. Thankfully, haven't had to use it because I'm pretty careful. Just random torque wrenches, calipers, more fuel tools alligator socket which I've only had to use a couple times just random feeler gauges degree finder gauge brake tools stretch belt tool this is another stretch belt tool Here, this is oil filter wrenches, oil filter strap wrenches, oil filter wrench, oil filter pliers. This is for the Cummins oil filter. Another strap. This is for the Cummins oil filter. So you loosen it, get it down, and since they're like deep in the frame there, you have to like twist them and bring them over. So you put this in so it doesn't spill. This is for Toyota. This is for Mercedes. And we just have some Torx screwdrivers. These L-type wrenches, these I use for the 4.0 Jeep oil filter adapter, the uh, O-ring there. So when they're sideways, you kind of can't get in there without using this unless you like, lift the motor up, pull the mount off. So that just makes it simpler. Ball joint press. Uh, ball joint tool inner tie rod tool I showed you in that video. These are for struts. Do I use these alone? No, I actually have a strut compressor. Do not use these alone. I know I have several, but no, I do not use these. I don't trust these. I actually have a strut compressor, big, big tool, a big giant one like in the shop that I mounted this uh, hitch material there. And I'll show you guys that another time, but 
yeah it, it's a big huge machine that goes on the back there i would never use these alone unless i was in an absolute pinch i don't trust them pickle fork so that's for getting like tie rods ball joints slide it in there hammer it out pitman arm tool extended pitman arm tool for forward stodges and a few di different things for, well, i don't know how this got over there but okay that's a pry bar uh inner tie rod tool or tie rod adjuster tool another pickle fork all these little adapters for that inner tie rod tool that i showed you the red one and then this cool thing is an inspection camera and it has this end that you can twist this and it wiggles well, that one's pretty handy it's a inspection camera bore scope type thing so look down and see what's in like a sensor uh, this here is come on, come on. All right, this is the uh, F car this is the one that I use on diesel big trucks medium duty heavy duty uh, semis it checks see that in the pre-purchase inspection uh, we got tape measure, more of those strut tools, uh, brake, master cylinder feeder. So when you're bleeding brakes, you can put this up and fill it with brake fluid, open it so that we don't have to go back and forth. Timing light. This is from Cornwell, cooling system pressure tester. Awesome tool. Grease guns in here. It's very messy. I'm not pulling it out. Torch. I always keep the torch. Um, you need to heat some things up sometimes. Rust and different sensors, like oxygen sensors and things like that, need some heat to get them out. I always carry a backup old bolt in. You never know when you're going to need an old bolt or nut to weld onto like something broken. Like a bolt inside is broken and you need to weld a nut to it. All right. So that was that side. Let's get into the bed here. Alright, so we've got into the bed here. Right back here, I've got some lights that I put on for nighttime working. Got a hitch. This is for that strut compressor. So, these are on the tailgate. I have wheel chocks. I have two three ton jacks. You never know when you're going to need more than one jack, so I always keep two. Harbor Freight collapsible cone. One of you guys told me about that, and I went and got two of them. They're pretty cool. I always put them out. I keep two jack stands, one here, one over here. Um, the buckets, used oil, used coolant. Um, don't just pour it on the ground, that's illegal. At least in my area, it is. Um, AutoZone recycles used oil. So does O'Reilly's, most places do. But just you know, take it in and get it recycled. Coolant, your uh, waste management or your, like your dump or something, call them. They take five gallons of coolant or 12 or something like that every third Saturday in my area. So I can take that in. I got air reel. Uh, that's 50 feet. I have a air compressor gas air compressor and it works really well and then I have the Harbor Freight 6500 generator with this I believe it's a 35 foot ex uh, extension cord reel so you know, when I'm working on AC I'll use that to run the AC machine the compressor or the vacuum pump and this machine also runs my welder which I'll show you in this box. All right, so I didn't have enough room in the truck, 
so I put this big job box in here. It's bolted in, and I'll show you what's inside. So, first thing is our stepping stool. And we have some AC gauges. We have our AC machine. This is a Robinair RG3 AC machine. It is awesome, portable, and I want to say I paid like $600 for this. I think they're a little cheaper now. I bought that one a couple years ago. Electronic scale. For all you guys doing mobile AC, you need to scale. Make sure you put the proper amount in and you're charging the proper amount. That way you're not ripping your customer off and you're not ripping yourself off. Lug nut master key set. Actually, do use this sometimes because people forget their wheel lock keys or the last mechanic lost them. But Harbor Freight sells this. I want to say it was like 80 bucks, maybe. Something like that. Another set of AC gauges, yes, I keep two, just in case the first set fails me, which I haven't had that happen yet, but I keep two. Uh, sometimes I do two AC jobs at once at the landscape company. I've done it before. My ball joint service add-on kit. So this, this kit from Harbor Freight, it's just a bunch of adapters. I haven't needed it yet, but I know I will. So keep it in the truck. This is another set of AC gauges, but for the new style R1234YF. Big extension cord, a thick one, for the welder. Not my fake grass. Alright, and my M12 light, the tower light. That thing's pretty cool. I keep the storage tank for R1234YF, storage tank for R134A, 30 pound R134 bottle here. This is a 10 pound R1234YF. That stuff is super expensive. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Our vacuum pump down there for AC. This is our, well, this is just a, transfer pump if I ever need to transfer any fluids. I keep a big jack stand here. This is the Hobart 140 welder and the 7525 welding gas. Uh, I have used it several times uh, out on the jobs already. I have a welding blanket down there. That's fiberglass. You don't catch anything on fire. That's a Mighty Vac uh, sucker. It sucks all the like fluids out. All right, then I have a 50 foot hose extension. I've got a lockout kit. So I can open the car if it's locked up. I haven't had to use that on a customer car yet, but I have unlocked a couple people's cars for them. That's my hose extension. This is for torsion bar. On Sorry, I had to change batteries. All right, GM torsion bar tool. This is the Harbor Freight front wheel drive bearing remover and installer kit. Um, anyone that doesn't have a press for wheel hubs on the front, buy that. Harbor Freight sells it. Awesome tool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then the power probe ACT 3000, this fine shorts, awesome tool. Power probe stuff. I don't have a power probe yet, but I have the short detector because I've had a few shorts where that just came in handy. 
All right, I'm gonna load all this back up in here and I'll show you inside the truck. All right, guys, so here is the Vantrue jump starter. This is the one that they sent out to us. It is a jump starter and it also charges your phone and everything. So this is a second work truck. Don't mind it, it's a mess. I haven't done a single thing to it, except I fixed a leaking radiator. But after that, I haven't done anything to it except sand it down. So this is exactly how I bought it, except you know, these are my jump starters because it won't start. That's because it's been sitting for a little while here because I haven't had time to work on it. So Vantru sent out jump starter and they sent out a second one so we can give away to you guys so I'm gonna explain how to win that no purchase necessary no you're not paying for anything so don't ever fall for any of those scams with me you will never pay for any giveaway that I do I'll pay for shipping I'll pay for handling I'll pay for boxing Literally, I'm gonna ship it to you, and that's it. So, we're gonna start this, press the power button, hold it till it turns on, we're at 56%. Let's see if it'll jump it. So, we're gonna hold this boost button, that's to start the car. So we're gonna clamp this, clamp that, and let's see if she'll fire up. I'm gonna have to give it some gas. Fires right up. A jump starter is pretty cool. I'm impressed. Fifty percent battery, fifty-six percent battery, and the thing fires right up. This thing was dead. This thing didn't do anything. Didn't make any sounds. This is our second truck that we'll do a video on when we fix it up. We'll get rid of the headliner, maybe fix it. I don't know. I took the headliner out the other truck, but we got the Vantrue JS1. Started it right up, only lost 2% battery. Super cool. Just hold the power button until it turns off. Unplug this, goes in a slick carrying case. Just pops right in there. This is exactly how it's gonna show up inside that box. So, occasionally I need to move this truck around. Get in and out of a few, get things in and out of a few, uh, gates over there so we get our bicycles out but we got it started thanks to Vantrue and we're gonna be giving this one away to you guys let me shut this off let's shut this off and then we'll talk by the way this type s i got from costco uh, i tried to use it the other day and it said too hot it's been like 105 degrees here and that van true actually started this the last time too well that said too hot i wasn't able to start the the truck because of that but thankfully due to, thanks to van true i was so i'll show you guys those ports in the bottom charge your phone it's got two usb ports USB C. it's got a dc port in it But definitely we've used that on a couple trips already charge our phones so how to win this completely free no money at all no shipping no nothing you guys are going to go into the description there's an email quality mobile giveaway at gmail.com email me let me know that you commented below on this video and i will pick one at random i'll go through each and every one of them um, you know, put them through kind of a, I'll pick like 30 of them and I'll put it into one of those little spinny wheels 
and I'm gonna go top, middle, bottom, you know, I'm gonna go about 30 of them, put them in one of those spinning wheels. Whoever wins, I'm gonna email you. I'll get your information to ship it, and I'll ship this out completely free. No charges, no taxes, no none of that, so don't be fooled. If anyone contacts you saying that you have to pay anything, you don't. With my giveaways, it's free. But thank you to Vantru for sponsoring this video, sending us a jump starter, and sending this for a giveaway for you guys. You're gonna see a few different videos where we're giving things away. And you know, thanks to our sponsor Vantru today for giving us this JS1. So we're able to jump start cars easier. It's a lot. This thing's super light too. Like you know, a couple pounds. Easy to store. I have a big jump box that I keep in the truck and i grab this every time now so let's get back to the video and looking at the rest of the truck all right so that was the bed of the truck i keep these um, buckets back here for catching coolant and oil and different things like that this is inside the truck 252,000 miles on my beautiful 1992 Chevy truck. This is a 2500 model. This little center console thing from Amazon. My wife bought it for me. Those cup holders down there suck, so these work. Amazon backup camera. Amazon um, splitter for the 12 volt. This right here is for the lights in the back. AC, radio doesn't work. You'll see in a couple of videos, we'll change that. My clipboard, which is holy cow hot. My scheduling book, which I'm not gonna show you personal information there. Little tiny scan tool, Matco. This is my first scan tool from years ago. And I still have it, still works. I use it for quick and easy jobs. And then, let's go to the other side. Well, I guess I can show you behind the seat. You know, scan tools, jackets, laptop, gear wrench, fender cover, not sponsored. I bought that on my own. Fire extinguisher. All right, let's go to, oh, let me pop the hood. We're gonna go to the other side. And then I'll show you under the hood. is this box here is our credit card machine this is what we use to take credit card payments it is almost six hundred dollars from bank of america but it's worth it i think because go straight into my account and you know, i can take other forms of payment square i used square before I used to hold my money for a couple weeks sometimes I was over that, not gonna do that no more. Bank of America hasn't done me wrong yet with that, so we're gonna keep on going. These are the knee pads people have been asking me to put on. Um, I, I've tried these and a couple others. I don't like them. I'm honestly gonna take them out of the truck because they slip around, they fall down. They uh, are just not comfortable. So you know, maybe in a different career field, maybe, but fine. Um, those are just business cards down there. That's pressure tank. All right, so everyone asks about the printer. So I have a inverter down here, Harbor Freight. The Jupiter, I wanna say this is a thousand watt. And, you know, I flip that switch on. I have it hooked to this where it charges all my batteries. There's a battery charger for my jump starter which I personally bought a big one and it's not in the truck right now. It's at a buddy's house. He just borrowed it. But I have my flashlight charger, my Milwaukee charger. And in order for us to be able to do all this, pull this out, pull this up here. We have, in order for us to be able to be out 
mobile using the software. We have this T-Mobile 5G, um, like a home internet kit. And it's like a hotspot, but better, more powerful. And it's like, I don't know, not that expensive from T-Mobile. So that's how we're able to do all of this. You know, Wi-Fi for the printer, Wi-Fi for the laptop, Wi-Fi for my phone. This is our printer. It's an Epson. It used to give me a ton of problems. I think I smacked it around one too many times and then it acted right. So um, I haven't had an issue with it since. But I run these two cables, power and ground, underneath the carpet. Goes out up to the front, which I'm going to show you right now. But yeah, that's my setup. An inverter charges everything while it's on. It charges my batteries, it charges my flashlight, and then it you know, runs the printer and everything, charges my laptop. So we're going to leave that on because we're actually going to leave for a job in a minute here. Just wanted to get this one out. So I did put a light on the top for nighttime when we're on the side of the road. Anybody that knows a Chevy knows you have to hit, or anybody that has a Chevy knows you have to hit here for the hood to pop. So what makes this truck different is batteries normally here and the coolant reservoir is normally there. As you can see, that's not a coolant reservoir. So we have the regular 12 volt battery. We have a battery, um, kind of like a separator. So when I turn the key on, the uh, solenoid in here clicks, puts the two batteries together. When I turn the key off, it separates the two batteries. So this battery here gets ran down all the way. If I you know, leave it on all day long, it'll get ran down all the way. And then I can still start the truck. If I didn't have this and I just ran off of this and I forgot the inverter on, I'd probably end up stuck at several jobs. So, you always want to separate your batteries and always put a, a breaker in here. That's a 200 amp breaker right there. So, you know, if anything arcs, it's going to separate them and not cause a catastrophic issue, hopefully. But um, normally the coolant reservoir is over there. I moved it over here. It has worked out great so far, there's been no issues. Actually, I'm, I'm really impressed with the setup. That's just an old battery that I had laying around. But I've got you know, power wire coming over here to this, power wire coming here to this, so this separates everything. It's all grounded properly. Um, it's just a 350 Chevy throttle body injected. It's not carbureted. Um, I've done head gaskets on this when I first got it. I drug it out of a field, so it sat in a field for I think it was like 10 years at least 10 15 years i drug it out of a field all four tires were flat this truck did not look like this at all i painted the bed i cleaned up all the paint up here uh, i did head gaskets water pump uh all, all fuel pump all kinds of stuff in order to get this the way it was and then came the ac i put this compressor on a year and a half ago well not this one I put one on from O'Reilly's Reman. That's all they sell for this. There's no new option. The new option does not fit this because it has a three quarter suction hose. This has a five eighths suction hose. So the new one doesn't fit. It's a Reman only. So I put it on there a year and a half and I didn't run the truck that often because I just started the business again last year. So I, I ran it maybe a thousand, 2000 miles, something like that. I ran it like, you know, one, 2,000 miles, and then it sat. And then I started it up this year, or last year, using it every once in a while, and it worked great. And then probably a month ago, it decided it wanted to start growling and making noise, so I replaced it. And as soon as I did, the clutch, they didn't adjust it right. It was way too tight. And as soon as I started it with the AC off, it was dragging with the compressor so I replaced it again 
and that that one decided to do the same thing while I was on the freeway it decided to start seizing up and it was smoking and so I ended up bending the the clutch almost all the way off of it so I replaced it with I think I, I'm like four into this and this one finally is acceptable it still makes noise as this still rubs just a little bit the the clutch kind of rubs just a little bit on the pulley but it's working it's been working for a little while now so i'm happy with it i have ac it's like 109 was what it was the other day and you know today's going to be like 105 106 i need ac I, I ran a couple weeks without ac because it was growling so i'm over that yeah, it's just a 350 chevy new water pump new fan clutch new compressor i did heads on it all new gaskets tune up i did all kinds of things to this truck to get it to where it's at so this is my my truck and it's been something that a lot of you guys have wanted to see so here it is this is this is our mobile rig um do I plan to keep it forever? Probably as a backup. Eventually I might sell it. But for now, for now this is what we're running. And you know, honestly, I bought I bought a second service truck over there. This is a 1998. This one's a 1992. This one's a 3500. It used to be a Southern California Bell. Like a it was a phone company truck. It's got a generator already on it. It's got a whole bunch of stuff already on it but it, uh, it was ugly. So I decided to have it all sanded down. We're going to, <clears throat> we're going to paint it, get it looking pretty. And then it sprung a freaking coolant leak out of nowhere. Or it sprung a coolant leak out of nowhere. So we're gonna take care of that. Just, you know, I just don't have time between editing videos for you guys, working a full-time job, responding to all the comments. My wife responds to 99% of them now. The other 1% that, you know, you guys have questions on, I respond to, which is perfectly fine. But you know, just really not enough time in the day and then to spend family time. So yeah. um, eventually we'll get that second work truck going. I plan to hire somebody and put them in the second truck. And, you know, I'm only one guy. I can only make so much for the company being one guy driving around as far as I do so we definitely need we definitely need someone um, with some experience and and all that so we're gonna start looking around but you know, that, that ends this video that's our service truck I appreciate each and every one of you guys liking commenting subscribing so we'll see you guys on the next one thanks for watching